And without further ado, I'd love to welcome a couple folks from the Progressive Policy Institute on, or affiliated with the Institute on stage to uh, talk a bit about uh, the work that they are doing and giving a much more global perspective of what's happening right now related to the issue of working class voters. So right now I'm gonna have Mike Tapp. He's a UK member of parliament for Dover and Deal. And Lucy Rigby, a UK member of parliament for Northampton North. Let's use this stair so uh, we have no injuries. Hey, Thank you so much. so much. Hey. So much. Hey. Great, great, great. So let's start big picture. You all won. <laughs> what does the recent Labour Party landslide in UK foreshadow for the US this November? Hey, Eugene. Um, well, I think uh, some omens are, are very good. Um, you guys have got yourselves a former state prosecutor, um, so like the Prime Minister in the UK, it's a very, it's a very good start, I think. Um, and we didn't know actually that we were going to go first. By the way, is a, what I should say. So the former Prime Minister in the UK had technically until January 25. Um, when he could have called the election, but he went um, earlier, and as you probably saw, it didn't work out. Um, it didn't work out entirely well for him. But look, I think um, the most important thing that the UK election foreshadows is that I think a centre-left party that talks relentlessly about the issues that matter to working people and communicates those well has the power to win back trust. Um, trust that's been lost uh, quite recently, and to win. And as you saw in the UK uh, context, to win big. And using um, the UK as the example, I think when I talk about those issues that matter to working people, uh, in the recent election that we had in July, those issues, we needed to talk about um, the economy, and within that, um, managing the economy well and helping people with the cost of living crisis that they were experiencing. And the other issue, which was kind of a threshold issue, was national security. So unless we were trusted on the economy and national security, we weren't going to be heard on other things. We were trusted on those two things, and that gave us the space to be listened to on health, on crime, on immigration, on everything else. Uh, Mike, you know, uh, can you dive into the strategy a bit about how you all were able to move the needle and get uh, voters to actually turn out for you based on the issues that uh, Lucy just mentioned that they cared a lot about? Yes, absolutely. Yeah, thanks for having us. It's a pleasure to be here for such a historic event. Yes. Uh, it re really is. And uh, look, we, we, we had a battle on our hands. Uh, you know, we had the, the biggest defeat since the Second World War to, to overcome in a very short period. And we had a strategy. And that strategy was essentially winning from the centre ground uh, and from the centre left. Okay. And you'll get a lot of noise from the, the far left and the far right. And they're louder uh, than those in the centre. But you have to stick to that strategy. And and the way that we approached this, and it took a number of years, was firstly cleaning up the Labour Party. Uh, we were plagued by anti-Semitism, and we had to be hard on that. And Keir Starmer, with his team, did a really good job of that. And then we moved on to ensuring that we highlighted the Conservative failures. And that was quite easy. Because there were so many of them, and because people were suffering, and working class, mm -hmm. hard working families were really suffering from the cost of living crisis. Mm -hmm. And then we laid out our stall as to exactly what we will offer the British people. Uh, and it's so important to not ignore what hard working uh, uh, people are saying to you. And uh, in my seat in Dover and Deal, one of the top issues uh, is immigration and insecure borders. And I didn't ignore them, and the party didn't ignore them, and that has led us to, to victory. Awesome. So you're here at the convention surrounded by strategists and political leaders from around the world uh, and, and mostly around the country, obviously. But the world is eager to understand the key to your success and replicate it. What's your call to action to other leaders in the room? That's a big question. Um, I think, and I'm sure the same is true in the US as it is in the UK, that I genuinely believe that the center left has the best answers to the challenges that are facing working people in the UK, the US, and other countries too. I think the challenge is communicating those solutions in a way that resonates um, with people in the face of that kind of false simplicity that comes with populism. 
But I think the UK election is a great example of if you do that, and as I said, if you relentlessly talk about the issues that matter to working people in a clear way, then you can win, and you can win big. Are there particular issues that you're hearing discussed right now on the campaign on both sides of the aisle that are very reminiscent of some of the issues you all hear often from your constituents? Uh, absolutely, and uh, housing is a big issue in the, in the United Kingdom, and. Uh, uh, we, we've taken that on, you know, and it is a case of uh, reforming those planning laws to ensure that people can own houses and, and that the rental prices come down. And, you know, I've knocked on obviously thousands of doors, like I'm sure many of you guys will be uh, over the next few months. And, you know, you're encountering people in their 40s living at home with their parents because they just can't afford to get on the ladder. And we have to cut through that red tape and bureaucracy and get the spades in the ground. And already we're seeing that from the Labour government starting to put that in place in, in just five weeks. So. Is, is there a topic that you think uh, has been of significant concern to your constituents, working people, uh, that you don't hear people in the U.S. on Capitol Hill talking about enough? Um, I mean, I think certainly, as Mike said, we knocked on tens of thousands of doors um, in each of our constituencies, and indeed, you know, Labour candidates were doing that across the country. I think the things that came up predominantly in Northampton, Northampton sort of... I should have said it's a sort of slap bang in the middle of England, really is the heart of the country. It's a, it's a marginal seat, a battleground seat, um, and it tends to go with the government. So if the Conservatives win, then the Conservatives win Northampton North and, and vice versa for Labour. Um, so it really is kind of, it's moderate politics. What people were talking to me about during the election was the cost of living. Mm. Um, that came up repeatedly. And then also public services, and that was about healthcare in particular, um, and it's about crime. I think, Mike, you had immigration was a, a big issue for you um, yeah, down in Dover. And, and on, on immigration, I think it's really important that, um, you know, secure borders uh, is fundamental to, to any nation state, and we mustn't ignore that. And it, it's dangerous to label people as, you know, racist if they are bringing up um, uh, immigration and ensure that we listen to people uh, and that we act on that, but well and truly within our Labour uh, and Democrat uh, democratic uh, values you know it's not a case of you know taking the the trump approach uh, but we can meet them where they are and ensure that they are listened to so for those who are not uh, deeply familiar with the politics of the uk what do you think people from the outside looking in uh, get wrong or misunderstand most about what it's like governing in the uk it's hard to say uh, because I'm in it, I'm there. Uh, I think, I mean, one of the biggest challenges for any government is delivery, isn't it? And, uh, and also, I think um, we've seen you know, great success with, with Bidenomics in, in the United States. And one of the big challenges is getting that to cut through to, to voters, to, for them to vote on it. Uh, and I think that's similar in the United Kingdom. You know, we've got five years to fix uh, a massive fiscal mess. Uh, but on top of that, we've got to make sure uh, we are combating other issues that, that matter to people to ensure they vote. But I think delivery is, is going to be tough. Uh, and that's why in the United Kingdom, for example, I think we need really 10 years of, of national renewal uh, to, to get to, to where we need to be. Um, but we can be that, that big player on, on the international stage again, and, and I think we will be. Lucy, what would you say the largest misunderstanding about uh, politics, if you were talking to someone not familiar with it who's outside of the UK? Well, I think Mike makes a really good point about, I mean, I think there is a point to be made about voter volatility, sort of increasing volatility. So um, if you look at the sort of history of recent UK elections, you can see there's, there's less sort of tribal attachment to political parties um, in the way that they used to be. And that can mean that you, you know, that there are big switches. Right big swings. Yeah. And so I think it would be a mistake for any political party in government to have any degree of complacency, um, and which leads me to Mike's point, which is it's all about delivery. And we now, um, as a Labour government in the UK, need to continue to communicate um, in the same way that we did during the election, but now we're communicating about the things that we're going to deliver, and we need quick delivery on the things that matter to working people, including the cost of living, including public services. So lastly, uh, we've got 24 hours in England, uh, and the next president, maybe Trump, maybe Harris, is at, at your office and asking you to take them somewhere to eat. Where, where are they eating? <laughs> That's yeah. I can, Just twenty four hours. Yeah, no, that's a. I was enjoying that moment actually, imagining that. Um, so you're going to come to Northampton. Okay. 
okay. obviously, right. um, with me in the UK. You're going to come to a great um, bar and cafe called Saints, which is not too far from um, our premier ship champion uh with sorry rugby yes. northampton saints yes. right yeah. um we're the premiership champions at the moment so you're going to come with me to saints okay. the bar run by a really great guy fantastic entrepreneur um and you're going to enjoy some history of northampton Thanks. yeah awesome. L lucy's normally right about everything but this, <laughs> this time you're wrong they're going to come to dover okay. <laughs> <laughs> um Hi. deal actually or, or kingsdown which is a village between the two uh, and there's a lovely pub on the beach, and they're going to have a pint, and they're going to watch the ship sail past. <laughs> I, I think pub on the beach is just one for me. <laughs> awesome. But I'm so glad both of you, are, Lucy and Mike, came to share uh, your thoughts and ideas with us here, and we really appreciate it, and hope we get to talk to you very soon. Thanks for having us. Awesome. Thank, Thank, you. You. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks.